couple on a mission to launch this floating mansion. Everything about her is kind of big. Will it survive a hazardous hoist? It's going to pull us down. And tug trek to its new home? That's a monster. Oh, oh, oh. It makes my heart bound. Launching this canal side castle will be nothing short of one massive move. <laughs> Seattle, a watery wonderland for lake lovers. Well, shoot, I hope the weather's not like this when we move the house in. I know it's a little choppy today. Mike and Patty Sherlock spend their lives on and around the water here. Sea Dog Mike was a fisherman before taking a sideways step into building houses that float. You never stop learning, and uh, there's always something new, and there's so many new challenges. Now Mike and Patty are giving up building floating homes to open up a whiskey distillery complete with ship's whistle. You know, this is probably the only place that you can legally drink on the job. It's a short commute from the distillery to their waterborne house moored on Lake Union. I'll get the line. But this busy couple's home is in danger of sinking under the weight of their beloved belongings. Everywhere you look, there's a story to tell, everything behind it. We have probably about 50 clocks in the house. This one actually came off of one of the ships that we worked on. They've run out of room, but Mike and Patty don't want to give up their spectacular spot under the Aurora Bridge. We see every boat that comes in and out of the lake, and this location is very special. It's like waking up on vacation. So we really don't want to give up this spot. So Mike's building one final home to move to their mooring. Uh, she's going to be pretty cool. An aquatic mansion big enough for all their collectibles. I kind of look at her, and it does kind of surprise me that she's so big. It's taken Mike two years to get his monster mansion off the drawing board. Don't you think that looks really pretty there? Oh, I like that a lot. Soaring three stories high, and with four and a half thousand square feet of space, Mike's built the biggest, most luxurious floating house in Seattle. I think this house is beautiful and incorporates so many innovative things that he's been, you know, Mike's brain is just like this, you know, thinking all the time. For when we get old, we'll have an elevator to get us up and down. Oh, this bathroom is uh, quite special. Mike and I can uh, enjoy a hot tub together, a little cocktail, and, and look out and enjoy the scenery as well. We're in the theater. We actually have about a five foot by 10 foot screen that comes down. So it'll be kind of fun. Mike's built the house in a boatyard just west of Seattle's Ballard Bridge. Now it needs rolling 50 meters to reach the water side and then sailing more than a mile, dodging three bridges to reach their mooring spot on Lake Union. No one knows if the mansion will even survive such a treacherous journey. I kind of went overboard, I think. You know, she's gonna be a house that we can live in forever, and she's gonna be a little bit of everything. She's our boat, home, house. The move. Well, it's very exciting, and, 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 and it's so close now, I, I can just hardly wait. The stakes are high for Mike and Patty. Building the mansion has cost them over $2.3 million. Moving it will be another $125,000, bringing the eye-watering total for this epic project to almost $2.5 million. It's a monster, but it's absolutely beautiful. Mike's called in naval architect Dan Lofstrom to oversee the first critical step of his house move launch the home into the water. There's quite a few things that can go wrong that uh, have worried both Mike and me, and a lot of it's just the weight. This thing's so heavy. I've seen one that was lowered by a crane, and it uh, was too top heavy and, uh, and ended up capsizing. The huge home was even laden with a swimming pool until a few months ago when Mike and Patty pulled the plug, leaving Dan with a big headache. 
taken great pains to work out how the weight inside the house is spread, even down to where the chairs go in the theater. But removing the swimming pool leaves the back deck unbalanced. Try launching now, and the unequal ballast will scupper this home. So Mike's team must fix a steel counterweight under the back of the house and pump concrete under the back deck. It's a quick fix, and there's no guarantee it'll work. If you look around here, we had to add about 80,000 pounds of concrete to compensate the pool. This is what our naval architect tells us we need to do. So we'll, we'll see how good his math is. If we did our engineering right and everything's built right, the water lines will be right in the middle where we want it to be. It's going to be close. Everything's going to click just right, and if it doesn't, then I just hope she floats. In Seattle, Mike and Patty Sherlock have spent two years building the biggest floating home in the city. I can hardly wait. We're almost there. Now it's ready for launch. But moving it 50 meters to the canal won't be easy. The hardest part about it is getting it in the water. Something this big is going to be a real challenge. Mike was hoping to lift the house to the canal with a crane. But weighing in at almost 150 tons, even Seattle's biggest crane won't be able to take the strain. So the team must use massive beams and wheels to support the house. Guiding it to the canal side. Ready for launch. They're gonna pick us up and uh, get us over there by the water, I hope. It's crazy. If we didn't have that ballast counterweight in the middle, then we would have another structural beam going running across and tying those two dollies together. Oh. That's going to be a problem when we start the move. We want to get it to go straight. If it's cattywampus a little bit, this is a heavy, heavy boat. Coming up. Heavy lifter Jeff Still pressures up hydraulic jacks. He's got pressure in the bleed hose to try and heave the three-story house off its concrete supports. Get a nerve wracking. That's scary. One little mistake and everything I've done is just all screwed up. We're free everywhere? Yep. But it's too big to budge. The side beam is bending quite a bit. It's just going to put a lot of stress on the boat and it's gonna, it's gonna sag and crack all the walls. A little bit of a separation there. Boy. The crew pack the gaps between the beams and floor with wooden blocks to spread the weight more evenly. It's a balancing act. We don't want to overload this beam. Pretty uh, stressful, that's for sure. <laughs> it really is. It's just like, my god. Oh! Oh! Cut this machine off. I'm not comfortable with it. The massive mansion buckles the beam to breaking point. We're going to go to a four, four dolly system on this. Yeah, we'll give that a try. Well, I feel a lot more at ease now with the extra two axles. With extra wheels beefing up the beam, the team face their next big test. Roll the house to the water side. If anybody sees anything weird, say something. All right, well, let's get at it, guys. Home of the chariots coming up. Nice and easy. She's moving. <laughs> yeah, look at the, the size of her when she comes out of that hole there. I'm thrilled to see it at this point. It's just so amazing, so exciting. Let's go ahead and take it towards you a little bit. Nice and easy. The crew must jackknife the wheels to reach the launch site, but turn too hard and the house could topple. 
pretty low ramp you go up it, it kind of makes you nervous. It's a slight tilt in the driveway here. Go, go, go. So we got minimum space to get this thing shifted as far over as we need to. Giant house, it's very difficult to turn this thing. Other way, other way! You can't turn it! That's just inches away. My heart is racing. Look at that. <laughs> Hold that. Like it? That's all we have. It's like a nickel and a nickel candy machine right there. Look at that. What do you got? One foot on each side? Thank you, baby. Okay. <laughs> now it's lunch time in Seattle. Nice and easy. Mike and Patty's canal side castle has made it to the water's edge. Thank you, baby. Okay. <laughs> now the crew face their toughest challenge. Okay, let's do it. Launch this monster. Yeah, I don't think it's ever been done before, picking something this big, already all put together, and then it's a little bit tougher when you're over the water. Weighing almost 150 tons, this floating palace needs not one, but two cranes to get it into the water. The giant dock crane will take the weight of one end, while a World War II floating steam crane supports the other. They must be close to the house. If their arms extend too far, it could spell doom. So a tugboat must push the floating crane as close to the house as possible. And pull the crane away while the house is suspended in mid-air. A precarious balancing act. Well, we'll do our best not to drop the house and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> well, you're away 20 feet. Roger, roger. I have this image in my brain of what could happen, but I've never seen it. The scale of this move is unprecedented. Worrying tug skipper Eric Freeman. Well, it's about a million different possibilities, but the most common is something brave. You, you want to get this thing in the water as quick as you can. Go ahead and start lining up and booming up. Coming up easy. The crane crew tensions up the lifting straps. They must balance the house perfectly or risk ripping it in two. That well, looks like they're crushing that gutter good. That makes me a little nervous. There we go. OK, we'll go easy up. It's a little scary way yeah. up there. <laughs> it makes my heart pound. Hold your Johnny. With the house dangling 30 feet in the air. So far, so good. Eric must now edge the steam crane out into the canal. If anything happens, this is where it's going to happen from now until splashdown. So the make or break right here. Mike's mansion pushes the steam hoist to its limits. Far out with this much weight, it's going to pull us down. A lot of creaking and groaning going on here. Five feet to go. The eagle has landed. Well, that doesn't look good at all. The mansion's floating, but it's tilting. It needs a lot more concrete. <laughs> How many yards do we put in the back there? Not enough. The extra concrete making up for the missing swimming pool just wasn't enough. So Mike puts in an emergency order for another 20 tons to level out the list. Sooner the better. I'm seeing a good 18 inches out of the water line. There's always a way to make stuff work. The extra concrete adds another $2,000 to the project. He's empty. Pretty damn good, Mike. Now the floating fortress can finally begin its voyage down the canal. But even with all the concrete below deck, 
the super tall house is top heavy. Its massive walls act like sails, putting the house on a collision course. So tug skipper Eric calls for help, a second boat to sail behind the runaway mansion. It'll act like a brake to slow it down. Okay, pulling away easy. Roger, roger. It's gonna be blown off the dock a little. Okay, roger that. Oh my gosh, isn't she a beauty? She looks so lovely on the water. But she's big, Patty, really big. Mike's hitching a ride, but he worries she'll be blown off course. We get a lot of sail area, so we can blow around, so it's gonna be up to the tugboat guys. Sliding a little sideways here. That's a monster. The more wind you have, the harder it is to control it. That's why we're using two boats on it. Good clients up top there. Roger, roger. The wind blows too hard, you end up crashing. That's the worst case scenario. No sinking, no fire, no carnage. With the voyage underway, Patty joins Mike on the bridge. Hey, how come you didn't carry me over the threshold? Well, I helped you get in the boat. <laughs> oh, it's really cool, all the boats that have joined us. Probably kind of an unusual sight. But with half a mile of crowded canal up ahead, Patty and Mike had better hold on. So far, so good. It makes my heart pound. Mike and Patty's 150-ton waterborne mansion has survived a hazardous lift and launch to make it into Seattle's ship canal. You can shove her a little south. I'm pulling right for the middle here. Now tugboat Captain Eric must guide it through the city's most crowded waterway. It's getting real busy here now. You know, people get drinking and be in the sunshine all day, and they're like, what's that? You know. You hope that they just go around you. They figure out that you're not going to move. Hey, slow down. Uh, there's a lot of weight here. Once you get it rolling, you know, it's like trying to stop a, a freight train or a big ship. Here it is. We can see where we're going to go. People are going to freak. <laughs> so right now we're underneath the Aurora Bridge. I will see it's pretty tight, so it's going to be interesting watching the tugboats maneuver this thing in place. Unless Mike's tape measure is broken, it'll fit. All right, I'm trying to grab it. Squeezing the 10-meter wide mansion into an 11-meter mooring with one of Seattle's biggest bridges in the way. Well, you're away 20 feet. We'll test both captains' metal. Just be a little ballet here. 10 feet. I'll just go in and out here. Use the weight of the house a little bit to help her turn. Right. Be ready to stop her up in just a minute. I'll get it over on Mike, get a line uh, around it. It's looking good. I, she's going to fit just fine. Tell me when you're happy there. Happy now. It fits, doesn't it? It's all put to bed. Wow. wow look at that. She's a beauty. It's taken two years to build their new home and an army of people to move it here. Hey, very well done. Thank you, Thank Mike. You. I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. Very good, very cool, and good job. Yeah, looks great. Against all the odds, the biggest floating home in Seattle reaches its dock on Lake Union. What I was thinking about was just how nicely the, the bridge frames it. Well, good job. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> that's a little bit more work to do before she's home, but. This is home. This is where this we're going to be able to spend the rest our of lives our together. lives here. Yeah. Just six weeks later, and Patty and Mike are filling the floating palace with their classic collections. You can see we're still moving in, but we've been living here a few days now. I have to tell you that it is much nicer than we ever dreamed. They dreamed big, and now they can put their feet up and enjoy it. 
Now I don't even think I can go to a regular theater ever again. <laughs> My favorite place is the dining room, kitchen, sunroom, <laughs> sitting room, <laughs> a theater, the tub. <laughs> Life aboard the huge house is good, but it's what's on the outside that matters most. This is what makes it special. It is very much worth it. Absolutely worth it. Yes. Absolutely. We really love her. Cheers to the Cheers new home, to the babe. Cheers to the home, babe. Nice. Love you. Thanks.